Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to have a second kick at the cat on this Orbitrol valve. Uh, what we finished rather abruptly on account of, as you no doubt were aware, the uh, rapid toe tapping and hand on hip wife vibe from <laughs> from beyond the shop door. I had to get out of here in a big hurry and put it this way. For putting up with me, my wife is a fucking saint. Even when I'm not giving her the old nine pound John Henry hammer routine, tell the kind folks not to worry. That's just my hammer sucking wind. She's still a saint. Now, now one of the things about putting these Vajeos up online is you get instant, instant feedback, instant peer review, and very thorough error checking. So made some errors in here, some errors of omission, that that weren't discussed but also some straight out errors so i'm gonna rectum fry that right here post haste i gleaned over this initially in favor of performing my husbandly duties but this is an interesting valve it is a proportional valve that means it's not either on or off it's um depending on where the where you position this you get proportionally more or less flow so this is a very special valve and there's proportion there's electric proportional oh here's another thing i never quite understood this i never grasped this and i guess guys that had internalized it and just know how it works they spout this kind of technical mumbo jumbo all the time but it doesn't make a sense to me people say air over hydraulic or electric over hydraulic and i never really understood what that meant I think what that means is the air is controlling the hydraulics or the electrical signals are controlling the hydraulics. But people say air over hydraulics and it's, it's not really 100% clear what exactly they mean. So we're going to pull this apart. Have a look at this at the computer. Look at this. Look at this. All kind of feathered slots in here what what we've just gone <laughs> hydraulic computer 2.0 the construction of this inner valve body is incredible cross hatch pattern on an outside diameter you see that cross hatched that's so it seats nicely then we have rotary feathering slots and also ground feathering slots in here. What that allows you to do is it feathers. So if you just give it a little bit of a tweak, you just allow a tiny bit of fluid to get in there and squeak to where it needs to go. And of course, on the inside of this valve body will be the same thing, cross-hatched pattern. And the match fit of this, this is where the amazement really comes in. Just pus pussies, fits like a glove, and as the Germans say, you add some wiener sliding on there. Look at that. Just fucking beautiful. It's, there's nothing physically touching. You can feel it's on a layer of oil. Pornographic. Okay, this is uh, This must be old, new, stock, new old stock sitting on the shelf because we do have some corrosion there. The corrosion is in pits. Almost what would appear to be edm to pits we'll get the microscope out we got to check that but the fit is so tight so tight and that's the thing that's the difference between me saying i think and i know i think is a discourse we we can chat about that it's it's not white and black it's it's gray shades of gray interestingly here's a feature you would not i don't think you'd get if it was edm there's a definite transition there where it's been ground on two different profiles you see this profile here has been ground and then there's a there's a edge right there and that edge is what actually seals it as it, and it's so fucking tight it just blows my mind like if you were off a blonde one on any of these it just wouldn't work it would not work so tight and yes, I have the Sumitomo, Sumitomo uh, cycloidal drive coming, which is an amazing drive. That'll be a gearbox reduction. So essentially it's the same, same operational principle just with some extra pins and stuff. Very, very cool. 
Where was I? Boobies. Getting back to there are no stupid questions, only stupid people. I made some stupid mistakes when I, I, and here's the thing. If you're looking at a diagram for the first time and you don't make mistakes, huh, you're a better man than me, partner. You ought to be making YouTube videos or, or, you know, being a teacher or something, or maybe you are a teacher. And that's why you're not making YouTube videos because uh, I'm just a dude fucking around in the shop. You know, this is a discourse. We discuss things. And that's why when I make mistakes, I don't give a fuck. I just fix them. I just fix them. No big deal. Happens. It happens. So this guy, I said these were pilot lines and this was for some sort of pressure differential, blah, 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 bullshit. Made sense to me at the time. Doesn't make sense anymore because schematically there is no little triangle here, little hollow triangle, what indicates pilot operated. And pilot pressure, pilot operated, just means that it takes pressure from somewhere else and uses that hydraulic pressure to actuate the valve. All we're doing here is we're using on this side, we are using spring pressure and these are actually adjustable. These are actually adjustable. Here's the spring for that there. And it's backed by this plug. So it is adjustable, not showing on here because they don't want you to fuck with it. If it had an arrow through it, that would mean that, yeah, give her, we can adjust those, no problem. So what this little pilot line, what I thought was a pilot line is, this is just a bleed off line in case any fluid gets behind the valve it doesn't build up any pressure and add to it that would fuck you up so this goes directly to tank same thing with these relief valves up here if there's anything what gets behind this valve it just bleeds off to the other valve bleeds off the tank essentially these lines above the spool now this spool when you look at it schematically it shuttles back and forth but it doesn't shuttle back and forth it turns that is how it's opening and closing ports in the body here it's indexing with certain holes. And as we can see, there's feathering slots. So when you just give her a little tweak, it, it moves a, a tiny bit. And it's also, according to these lines, it's a proportional valve. So you get proportional flow depending on how far you turn. Now, on a steering wheel, you turn a little bit. On a regular valve, you turn a little bit, your steering's gonna go all the way hard over, either one side or t'other. In a steering situation, you don't want that. You, you just want to move the wheel a little and you want the wheels to move a little, not slowly creep along. So that's the proportional section here. This valve will actually shuttle over as you turn it. This valve will shuttle over a little bit and then shuttle back slowly. It goes back into the neutral position. So you've moved, you've moved it say 90 degrees, you've moved it to the three o'clock position. The steering's only gonna go so much and then this valve is going to close off again. So that's the proportional side of this. Now, somebody else said that because this is a pump and a motor, you could also, uh, if you don't have pump flow, you could also turn the wheel and get some steering. Now, maybe in theory, but in reality, you are never ever gonna get enough flow out of this to actually steer hard over the other way. You might be able to give it a little wiggle, like a tiny little, a tiny little wiggle just by hand, but no way is this going to work like a pump. This is pretty much strictly for feedback. And a patron by the name of Max had a question, is it possible, not in these, in so many words, but I've, I've translated it into the proper lingo. Is it possible to meter the fluid going into a pneumatic cylinder in order to not get full actuation? You know how a pneumatic cylinder, you give it air and it just, it fucks off as far as it can. And that's an interesting question to me because I've already answered it. And yes, absolutely it is. I did a Vigeo, it might have been, it might be deleted now because it was years and years ago. But what I did, what I did, and I can show you again because I've already done it, it's pretty easy now. What I did, I took a cylinder and I added a little eat a fruit, uh, a little flow meter, a little fluid flow meter and an Arduino and what would happen is as I added the air into the cylinder, this little Arduino would count how many pulses it was getting and then shut off the air um, as it got to the, the correct position to get absolute positioning out of a pneumatic cylinder. And I got within, I think, one centimeter on something like a two meter stroke. So that's pretty fucking good for an air cylinder. And the interesting thing was, the more load that was on the cylinder, 
the more accurate it was. Why is that? Because proportionally, the seal friction was less. And here we go. Oh yeah, ground, not EDM'd. But he was right. Although he was a fucking jerk about it. But here's a lapped face, and this is reasonably clean. But look at the schmoo on there. You don't realize. You do not realize how much crud you put on stuff when you pick it up, especially in a dirty shop like this. Well, this, <laughs> as far as industry goes, this is well lit and not that dirty because there are some horrendous shit shows. And yet still people take stuff apart, goes back together, works just fine. Let's have a look at this guy too, this crosshatch. Yeah, look at that, beauty. Beauty. Now let's have a look at the corrosion here on those lobes. We can see some pitting. You know, it doesn't look like much to the naked eye. But you get in there with the microscope and it's fairly gnarly. That's amazing that this, how much crap this thing can put up with and still seal. While we got the microscope out, we'll have a look at that little tiny Barnes Holodex pump. What we did previous. Also, when I did the calculation, we were off by a little bit because I, got, I didn't take into account that these gears are meshed. These gears are enmeshed. So that volume calculation was off by five, ten percent. That's where it is right there. The gear enmeshment. No oil can get in there when, when there's gear. So you do one full rotation and uh, that's where your missing volume is from. Now, let's have a look at the cavitation damage. Just the, the very start of the cavitation damage on this yaw, and then we'll we'll scoot this over if we can. And we start to see some pitting in the middle of the gear where the metal has eroded away from that high pressure shock wave, the supersonic shock wave that pulls material away when the bubble collapses. We can see the damage to the surface there. I sent now <laughs> As I said, my wife uh, did all this, so I sent Grady Hillhouse uh, a little tool, what for checking. He's he's gonna run some cavitation tests, and I, I think I got the perfect little device. I made something; it was a piece of shit. I, I wasn't happy with it, so I threw it in the fuck it bucket. Essentially, I, oh, I wasn't comfortable sending it out; just wasn't good enough. So I came up with another solution, off the shelf solution, and that's on the way. So. In the coming years, he'll be able to do a cavitation uh, demo. So that'll be interesting. Other than that, I, I think we've beat this dead horse proper. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a voice. Stickers? I hardly know her. New stickers. So we're getting rid of the triple nickel. If you want the triple nickel timer chip, uh, the last of them are, she's down to the short strokes. And we are completely out of toolbox security stickers. But we ordered some more and we're going to pair these up with the Cockford Ollie guys. We're asking for these toolbox stickers. So these are the new stickers. If you want some stickers, we'll do the same deal. Uh, whatever it was, two for six bucks or four, no, four for six bucks it was. And my dear, sweet, long-suffering, saintly wife took her day off yesterday, Armistice Day. Uh, Remembrance Day here in Canada, lest we forget. She took her day off and plowed through all of the giveaways all the first chip rulers, all the stuff for guys, uh, I built stuff for, all the t-shirts, everything. Everything is going out, so that is a huge, a huge pile. I let that get uh, just way out of hand. So that is all going out. Uh, it's been months in the making, <laughs> so expect that. If in you, if in you want a t-shirt, down below me in the doobly-doo or stickers or whatever it was, whatever it was. I owed you something, some piece of machining or I wanted to give you a t-shirt or a mug or whatever. It's a coming. And you can thank my lovely wife for that.